happiness. Or no satisfaction because of this? No. But that, no? that's not why we have feelings of dissatisfaction. Okay. We explained yesterday the cause of dissatisfaction was due to disconnection with the Supreme. When yeah, we, no, that, that's what I'm saying, Gurudev. Can we put it like that? But uh, Parashakti means us, the, uh, the spiritual energy, because we choose to be away, so we're covered by Aparashakti, the material energy. Can we also say like that? It's, or it's not, not just we choose to be, but it's because we identify with the inferior energy. And we think of ourselves uh -huh. as the controller. And we think of ourselves as being independent. We think the energy belongs to us. We don't think that this energy is the, the property of the Supreme Lord. Mm. We're thinking it's all mine. It's my mm. body. We're not understanding this body is given to us by the grace of the Supreme. Mm. So the problem is forgetfulness of Krishna. Because we've forgotten mm. Krishna, therefore we have these problems. Mm. Well, Alright, good. Clear. Got it. Thank you. We'll go ahead. Be because the Supreme Being, the Absolute Personality of Godhead, is the complete person, He has complete and perfect intelligence to adjust everything by means of His different potencies. The Supreme Being is often compared to a fire and everything organic and inorganic is compared to the heat and light. Did I just read that? <laughs> just like, just as fire distributes energy in the form of the Lord, displays His energy in different ways. Yeah, He's full of inconceivable opulences, power, fame, beauty, knowledge, renunciation, right? This is Bhagavan. He has the six opulences. One should therefore be intelligent enough to know that except for the Lord, no one is a proprietor of anything. One should accept only those things that are set aside by the Lord as his quota. Now Prabhupada gives some examples. The cow, for instance, gives milk, but she does not drink that milk. She eats grass and straw, and her milk is designated as food for human beings. Oh, certainly the vegans would not like this, would they? Vegans would, not, would, would argue with this. Anyway, Prabhupada is explaining what, was, what has been the tradition for hundreds of thousands of years, that cow milk was meant for human beings. Such is the arrangement of the Lord. Thus we should be satisfied with those things He has kindly set aside for us. And we should always consider to whom these things we possess actually belong. Right? We are given proprietorship over them, but we should remember who they actually belong to, who is giving us. Ultimately, everything is given to us by the grace of Krishna. But we are thinking, this is mine, I work for this. We're not understanding how Krishna is providing for everyone. Another example. Take for example our dwelling, meaning our dwelling house, made of earth, wood, stone, iron, cement, and so many other material things. If we think in terms of Sri Ishopanishad, we must know that we cannot produce any of these building materials ourselves. Right? We cannot produce wood. Wood comes from the tree. The trees grow by nature. Whose nature? God's nature. Similarly, stone. Where do we get stone from? Comes from the ground. Who put it there? Whose is it? Whose stone is it? It's not ours been there long before we came. What is ours? Nothing is actually ours. Everything belongs to Krishna. 
we can simply bring them together, transform them into different shapes by our labor. Prabhupada gives a nice example. He says, a laborer cannot claim to be a proprietor of a thing just because he has worked hard to manufacture it. Just like you hire some people to build a house for you. So you pay them, you pay them to buy the materials and you pay them to build the house. They cannot claim, oh, it's, it's my house, I built it. You know, we hired them to work for us. In the same way, whatever we have also, we're just like workers who build the house for us. That we're all workers for the Supreme Lord. We're all His workers. Prabhupada goes on to give some more examples about things in the modern society. He's, in Srila Prabhupada's time it was a little different from how it is now, but still today, still even now today, there's still some communism in the world. China, there's five countries communist, I think. Uh, North Korea and China and uh, Vietnam and uh, a couple of other small places. Anyway, in modern society, there's always a great quarrel between the laborers and the capitalists. The laborers, meaning the communist movement, the quarrel has taken an international shape and the world is in danger. We men face one another in enmity and, and snarl just like cats and dogs. Sri Shopanishad cannot give evidence to the cats and dogs, but it can deliver the message of Godhead to man through the bona fide acharyas, holy teachers. The human race should take the Vedic wisdom of Sri Shopanishad and not quarrel over material possessions. Is it a fact? Are, are, the, are, are is it people in the world quarreling over material possessions? Yes. Yes, Maharaj. Can we give some examples? Just now going, <laughs> just now going on, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, just now going on. Border fight, contesting the border, India and China. Is it a very valuable piece of land? Somewhere in the mountains, in the Himalayas, useless land, nobody there. I know some years ago, number of years ago now. England went to war with Argentine because Argentine had taken possession of some islands which were off the coast of Argentine. They were called the Falklands. The Falkland Islands. There, were, there was nothing there. Useless little islands, in, uh, uninhabited practically. So Argentina took possession of it. In England, under Mrs. Margaret Thatcher, declared war. And there was a, a big war, and many people died, and a lot of money was spent on bombs and aircrafts and things over a useless little island which was no value to each other. So, this is the situation in the world today. <laughs> people are in this illusion. They're all claiming, this belongs to me. England saying, this is our land. And Argentina was saying, this is my land. China is saying, this is our land. India is saying, it's our land. <laughs> in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a section in the Bhagavatam called the Bhumi Gita. Mother Earth is laughing at the kings who are fighting over her land. The kings are fighting wars to get possession of the land and they end up both dying. 
the the land is still there but they they're all they're all dead they kill each other and they're fighting Srila Prabhupada saw himself when he was a young man he saw at the time of the partition of India and Pakistan how people fought with each other Hindu and Muslim they fought with each other killing each other they were saying this is my land the land has always been here but we're claiming belongs to me so this is ignorance I'd like to invite someone to read maybe Ram Gopinath Prabhu could you read for me we're on this section one must be con one must be satisfied one must be satisfied with whatever privileges are given to him by the mercy of the Lord there can be There can be no peace if the communist or capitalist or any other party claims proprietorship over the resources of the nature which are entirely the property of the Lord. The capitalist cannot curb the communist simply by political maneuvering, nor can the communist defeat the capitalist simply by fighting for stolen bread. Okay, Sim simply by fighting for stolen bread, right? Mm. <laughs> Prabhupada tells a story about how the, how the communists came into power. He, he would tell how they would come to people and they would say, Oh, you believe in God? He would, and the communists would say to them, Go to your temple and pray to your God, ask him to give you bread. You want some bread to eat? Go to your God, go and pray there, ask him to give you bread. So the people would go to the church or they go to the temple and they pray to God, Oh, give us bread, please give us our bread. And they come back and then the communists would say, Well, did you get any bread? Did your God give you any bread? And they say, No, he didn't give us any bread. So then the communists would say to the people, ask us to give you bread. So the people would pray to the communists, dear communist brother, please give us some bread. So the communist people said, all right, and they arranged big trucks to come, give the bread to all the people. And in this way all the people became communists. They all thought, oh, communi communism is greater than God. <laughs> they thought like that. They did not think to say, who gave you the bread? Who gave you the bread, you communist rascal? Who gave you the wheat? Who gave you the water? Who gave you the power for the ovens to bake the bread? Everything comes from God. You have simply taken what God has given you. So like this, Prabhupada writes here, it said, uh, the communists defeat the capitalists simply by fighting for stolen bread. And the capitalists, they're trying to do political maneuvering, making promises and signing treaties and different meetings and discussions and so on. So all of these things, this is all useless. Go ahead, Ram Gopinath Prabhu. If they do not recognize the proprietorship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the property they claim to be their own is stolen. Consequently, they will be liable to punishment by the laws of nature. Nuclear bombs are in the hands of both communists and capitalists, and if both do not recognize the proprietorship of the Supreme Lord, it is certain certain that these bombs will ultimately ruin both parties. Thus, in order to save themselves and bring peace to the world, both parties must follow the instruction of Sri Ishtar Thank you very much, Prabhu. Yes. 
So Prabhupada's explaining here this conflict between different political parties, some capitalists, some socialists, and arguing, claiming this is ours, this belongs to us. What is actually ours? Nothing is ours. Long before the communists came or before the capitalists came, everything was there. It's all the property of God. It's His property. We're simply thieves. We're taking what actually belongs to Him. Rukmini Pati Prabhu, you can read something? Human beings are not men? Yes, Maharaj. Human beings are not meant to quarrel like cats and dogs. They must be intelligent enough to realize the importance and aim of human life. The Vedic literatures are compiled for humanity and not for cats and dogs. Cats and dogs can kill other animals or food without incurring sin. But if a man kills an animal for the satisfaction of his uncontrolled taste buds, he is responsible for breaking the laws of nature. Consequently, he must be punished. Okay, so we can understand this. There's a law of karma for the human beings, but that does not apply to the animals. The animals are not under the laws of karma. Their animal body is the karma. That's the re results of karma, that they're put into the animal body. But in human form of life, we're given responsibility. And if we don't act in the proper way, we'll, get, we'll suffer, we'll get reactions. So we have to be very careful. Prabhupada's giving a nice example. The cats and dogs, they can kill to eat, but we cannot do it. If we do it, we suffer, we get reactions, we get punished. Go ahead, Rukmini Pati Prabhu. The standard of life for human beings cannot be applied to animals. The tiger does not eat rice wheat or drink cow's milk because he has been given food in the shape of animal flesh. There are many animals and birds that are either vegetarian or carnivorous, but none of them transgress the laws of nature as these laws has been ordained by the will of God. Animals, birds, reptiles and other lower life forms strictly adhere to the laws of nature. Therefore, there is no question of sin for them, nor are the Vedic instructions meant for them. Human life alone is a life of responsibility. Thank you. Yeah. Human life is responsibility. Prabhupada explains that human beings, we're given facilities more than the animals. We have nice medical facilities, hospitals, we have schools, we have transportation, we have nice housing. The animals don't get those kind of facilities. So Prabhupada gives an example, he said, just like in the government office, the highly placed government officer, he may be given facilities, nice house, he may get government car, and government servants also, but with the facility comes responsibility. It's on the same way. Human life, we enjoy facility, but these facilities mean also responsibility. We have to recognize our responsibility as human beings and to live properly according to the laws of God. Very important for us. Okay, we'll go ahead. Narayan Prabhu, you can read. Yes, Maharaj. It, it is uh, also wrong to con uh, consider that simply by becoming a vegetarian, one can save himself from transgressing the laws of nature. Vegetables also have life. One life is meant to feed another living being. 
and that is the law of nature. One should not be proud of being a strict vegetarian. The animals have no developed consciousness to recognize the Lord, but a human being is sufficiently intelligent to take lessons from the Vedic literature and thereby know how the law of nature are working and derive profit out of such knowledge. If a man neglects the uh, instruction of the Vedic literature, his life is very risky. The human being is therefore required to recognize the authority of the Supreme Lord. He must be a devotee of the Lord. He must offer everything to the service of the Lord and partake of only the remnants of foodstuff offered to the Lord. That will make him able to discharge his duty properly. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord directs, directly states that he accepts the vegetable foodstuffs from the hands of a pure devotee. Therefore, a human being should not only become a strict vegetarian, but he should also be a devotee of the Lord and offer the Lord all his food and only then partake of the prasadam, the all mercy of God. Such a devotee can properly discharge the duty of human life. Those who do not do so are eating only sins and thus will be subjected to the different types of distress which are the result of the various sins. Go ahead, just finish. The root of sin is deliberate disobedience to the law of nature through, though, through not recognizing the proprietorship of the Lord, disobedience to the law of nature or disobedience to the order of the Lord may bring ruin to the human being. On the other hand, if one is sober and knows the laws of nature without being influenced by unnecessary attachment or abhorrence, he is sure to be recognized again by the Lord and thus become eligible to go back to Godhead, back to the eternal home. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, so Srila Prabhupada is giving his purport here to this uh, very important verse in the Ishopanishad. Let me see, I have some PowerPoint here. Oh. We'll just go through this quickly here. Okay, so here's the mantra. Everyone chant it again together. Isya Vashyam Midam Sadvam Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we were discussing everything animate and inanimate. That's the translation. It's the property of the Lord. Isha, the Lord, Avashyam, owned and controlled, it's all His. He's the proprietor. We explained about the two energies, Paraprakriti and Aparaprakriti. What's the difference? What's superior, one is superior. What? Why is it superior? The other one has but no consciousness. Right, yeah. One is animate. Meaning conscious, the other is inanimate, inanimate, no consciousness. There is nothing in the universe, does not belong to either the, the para or the apara. Therefore, everything is the property of the Lord, Prabhupada said. We read in the purport. We spoke about this Bhagavad communism. Now, we want to understand what is, Prabhupada speaks about this Bhagavata communism. Can you understand what the meaning is? What, the, what does the communist people say? Who does everything belong to? 
in a communist society. Everything belongs to the government. Yes, everything belongs to the government or to the state. So Prabhupada said, we're speaking about Bhagavata communism. So who does everything belong to? Krishna. Yes, Krishna. yes, everything is Krishna's, right. Someone can read this? Read for me this, this slide. Mataji? Ma 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 As the communists to say everything belongs to the state, we say everything belongs to God. We never say that anything belongs to anyone. No, this is Bhagavata communism. We say everything belongs to God. Thank you. Very nice. Yes. We never say this belongs to me or this belongs to her or him. No, everything belongs to Krishna. <laughs> One time the devotees were in Vrindavan and the devotees were going, when they first came to Vrindavan, they used to take sweets. They'd go past the sweet shop and they'd just take sweets. And the people got a bit upset and they came to Prabhupada and complained. They said, Prabhupada, your disciples are just taking the sweets from our shop. They don't pay anything. Prabhupada said, that's not good. Prabhupada spoke to the devotees. He said, why are you doing that? The devotees said, but Prabhupada, you said everything is prasadam. We thought we could just take it. <laughs> Prabhupada said, no, you can't just do like that. He said, yeah, everything belongs to Krishna, but we have to respect how Krishna has given proprietorship to different people. So it doesn't give us the right to just take anything and everything. Okay, someone else can read this. Mariji? Another Mariji? So we should not take anything neglectfully, neither we should be careless to take care of Krishna property, Krishna's living being, Krishna's house, Krishna's temple, Krishna's business. Yes, we have to take care of everything. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I remember when I was a young devotee, we, we temple would buy cars for Sankirtan, and nobody would ever take care of the car. Nobody would put petrol, nobody would check the oil, nobody would check the tire pressure. They say, oh, it's Krishna's car. <laughs> you know, when it's your own car, you take more care. But when we think it's Krishna's, we don't, but Prabhupada said, we must be careful. Don't be careless about Krishna's property. We must take care of Krishna's temple, Krishna's house, Krishna's, Krishna's business, everything. That is perfect Krishna consciousness. Another person read. Managers, come on, read. Krishna's, everything Krishna's. Isavasham idam sarvam yakincha jagatyam jagat. If you think like that, then that is perfect Krishna consciousness. Oh, yeah, very nice, yeah. So, what does this mean? What does it mean? Ishavasham idam sarvam yakincha jagatyam gada. What's the meaning? Manaji, who just read this? Everything plus Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Ishyavasya midam sarvam, everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. So this is what's said here, Ishyavasyam. We talk about the Ishyavasya society. What does it mean? What is the meaning? Isavashyam? Do you remember? Everything is controlled by the Lord. Everything controlled by the Lord. So it's Ishavasya society is a society where Isha, God, Krishna is in the center. And he's he it's all he's the proprietor, he's the controller. It's all his. And we are all his servants. Prabhupada. If we think like that, 
That is perfect Krishna consciousness, right? We, you want to be, we should be able to recognize these verses. Prabhupada is just quoting the Sanskrit there. Ishavashyam idam sarvam yadkincha jagatyam gad. Everything animate in the jagat, the jagat, the universe, it's all is avashyam, it's Krishna's property. Idam sarvam, all, it's all his. Second part of the verse. Tena chaktena bunjata. Tena by him. Chaktena. Set apart. Quota. Bunjata you should accept. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself. Set aside as his quota. What's your quota? When we would do Sankirtan, devote sometimes it. The Sankirtan leader would give everyone a quota. You have to go out, you have to distribute 50 books. Don't come back till you distribute 50 books. <laughs> everyone had a different quota according to their ability, you know. You're given a quota. So we ask, give incidents, pictures, articles where solutions could be achieved if the Ishyavasha principle were applied. So we talked about India-China border dispute, I talked about Falklands in England and Argentine. It could all have been solved by the Ishavasha principle. We understood everything belongs to Krishna. Someone read this please, Madhijis. No more than what we require. Whatever wealth is there within this universe all belong to God. And we are, as sons of God, we have a right to take advantage of this wealth, but not more than that, what I require. That's all. This is spiritual communism. If you take more, then you become punishable. This is the law of nature. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 1, text 15. Thank you. So, spiritual communism. We heard about Bhagavata communism and spiritual communism. Is there any difference? Malini, what do you say? Any difference? Bhagavata communism and spiritual communism? Yeah, the material communism. Is... But I'm saying, is there a difference between Bhagavata communism and spiritual communism? No. No, no, of course, there's no difference, right? No. no. Everything, <laughs> spiritual communism, same. it's the same, right? Same. Okay. Just make sure. Okay, someone else read. No more than what we require. List some areas in your life where you may be challenged in applying this principle. <laughs> Don't take more than what you require, right? Is it a challenge? What are Big challenge. In what areas you might be challenged in this, taking more than you require? Any, anyone like to describe their, which particular aspect or area of their life? Don't take more than what we require. Yeah, how, how much do we need? Do, you know, do we need a big a big house or can we just live in a small house? How big a place do we need? How many cars do you have? A lot. Huh? A lot. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're saying. There's, there's clothes, clothes. Oh, clothes, okay. Yeah, clothes. You may have more clothes. Your wardrobe is very full. You have a lot, of a lot of nice clothes there. Hardly ever wear them. Shoes. Oh, yes, shoes. Oh, we love to have shoes. 
Prasadam. Prasadam. We often take more than what we need. Monthly earnings. Oh, you have more money than what you need. That's not a problem. Yeah, we can help you there. <laughs> Come and see us. We'll help you. <laughs> you may be challenged. Hmm? Handbags. Handbags, yeah. Ladies, well, ladies like to have these different things, you know, they have to have a handbag which goes with a particular dress. So the handbag has to be a particular color which fits with that dress. And so they, as they have many dresses, they have to have a handbag to go with each dress. And then shoes also should be going with the dress. And this way you get a big wardrobe. Well, that's, jewels. that's for ladies. Jewels. Jewels, jewelry, oh, okay, yeah, a lot of jewelry. Mm. What about the man? Did the, did the man have any problem sometimes? You know, ladies, they have, you know, ladies are entitled to have a bit more than men. You know, ladies need clothes, they need to decorate, they need to dress nicely. What about men? Where, 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 where do men have the problem? Well, some men, one woman is not enough. They have more than one woman, right? They have a few women. <laughs> like that. Okay, let's go ahead. Not more than what we require. Discuss with a partner how by applying the principles of Mantra 1, you could overcome these challenges. So, what is the principle, first of all? What's the principle of Mantra 1? Nothing belongs to Krishna. Yeah, but there's another part to the principle. Krishna is the owner of everything. Yeah, that's the first part. But what's the second part of the Mantra 1? Yes, that we're only allowed a particular quota. We should only take what's necessary for ourselves. We shouldn't take more than what we actually need. Is everyone there? Yes, my Lord. Okay, you can hear me still? Okay. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Okay. So, how to overcome these challenges? It's a challenge. Accumulation, you know, we're in the consumer society. You live in places like Kuala Lumpur, you know, uh, Penang, they're consumer places, consumer society. People love to go shopping and they love to purchase things and they have so many things at home, they have more and more, so many more things than they actually need. How to overcome these, these challenges? Okay. And what is, what are you going to do with all the things which you're not using in the Lord's service? Oh yeah, such as shoes and everything. I just thank the Lord for having such things. You thank the, I can't offer. Oh, oh you, yes. you you need to thank Krishna for giving her so many shoes. <laughs> no, Gurudev, I fortunately I don't exceed what I need. If I need only one pair, then I get only one pair. No more. <laughs> no excess. Okay. Okay, so definitely there's a need for us to be conscious. Try to keep ourselves simple, simple living, high thinking, minimize the demands of the body. And this way we are able to cultivate more the mode of goodness. All right? Don't accumulate more unnecessary. This you can discuss more when we read from the 
Upadeshamrita, you read about Atyahara, over collecting, overeating, these kind of problems. Okay. Another question, how could our society be improved through application of the Ishyavashya or Bhagavata communism principle? How could our society, talking about, we could talk about the, the Tamil society in Malaysia, we could talk about the Krishna conscious society there, we could talk about just the human society. But how could it be improved by Ishavasha or Bhagavata communism principle? What are some of the principles of communism? The, the principle is everyone is equal, right? Right. Everyone's considered equal and nobody should go hungry. Everyone should be taken care of. And Prabhupada said this principle is there also in Vedic society, in the Bhagavata communism society, in Ishyavasya society. No one should go hungry. The, in one who is a grihasta, the, the family people, they should not allow anyone to go hungry. It said even, even the insects in their home should be fed. Even if there's a snake or a rat, it's our duty to feed it. It shouldn't, be go, it shouldn't go hungry. That is Ishyavasha society. Prabhupada, sometimes people, when they would get married, they would often ask Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, now I'm a Grihastha, please tell me what is my duty. And Srila Prabhupada would often explain to them, said, your duty is to go to the door of your home and to call out. Food is now ready in my home. If anybody there is hungry, please come and eat. Prabhupada said, that is householder life, that is the duty, that is the Ishyavasya principle. They should not allow anyone to go hungry. They want to feed others before they feed themselves. And Prabhupada said, when he was a child, his mother and father, every day they would have four or five guests come to their home. And his mother would cook and feed them all. This is the Ishyavasya principle, being very compassionate and caring for others. And Prabhupada also applied, he wrote a letter, 1977 I think it was, or 76, he sent it to all the temples all over the world. And the instruction was that anybody who comes to, any guest who comes to the temple, they should be given prasadam. He said, prasadam must always be available. He said, Krishna is not a poor man. And when we give, when we provide for everyone, then Krishna will provide more. He said, but Lakshmi is the consort of Krishna and she will provide for the temple, to maintain the temple. But no one should be refused prasadam. The people come to the temple, guests, they should be given prasadam. It, and they cannot be told, oh, nothing is ready, it's not available, nothing is ready. He said, you must keep prasadam always available. So you can see how Prabhupada wanted us to apply this Ishyavasya principle in our society. Just think how the world could be improved if we were more God conscious, if we had this more, if we all had this principle of understanding that everything belongs to God. But what do we do? We think, this is mine. We build a big fence or a big wall and then we put a sign up, beware of the dog. Don't come to my house, I've got a big dog here. My dog will get you. <laughs> That's what happens, right? 
Isn't it true? I know in Malaysia, if I go for Sankirtan in Malaysia, it's a bit like that. You go to houses, you know, big sign up, beware of the dog, a big wall and everything. Of course, there's so many thieves, so many rascals also. People have to protect themselves. So, Prabhupada, well this sloka from this mantra, we're learning how common it is for people to take what is not actually theirs. What is that called in common language? You take something which is not yours? How would we call that? A thief. Yeah, a thief. Right. Thieving. Prabhupada tells a story about Alexander the Great. And one man was arrested for stealing some things in the marketplace and he was taken to Alexander the Great for punishment. But this, this, this man who was a thief in the market, he said to Alexander the Great, he said, you know, he said, I'm just a little thief. He said, you're a big thief. You went everywhere, you plundered everywhere, you plundered so many countries. He said, I'm only a little thief. You're a big thief. Alexander the Great was impressed. He thought, this man is right. He told him, you get out of here, go. He didn't punish him. So people today, the mo modern society is like that. Prabhupada said, only two people, the cheaters and the cheated. We get cheated, we get, you know, people steal, they take everything. We're actually stealing from God, stealing from Krishna. We're thinking, this is mine, belongs to me. Prabhupada tells another story about the thieves, the gang of thieves. They came to the man's home. And they robbed the man's home, they took a lot of treasure, and they ran off into the forest. There's a big gang of thieves. And when they sat down, then this one man said to all the thieves, he said, let's divide the treasure honestly. <laughs> They'd already stolen everything, but he's talking about being honest and divide everything fairly, morally, be moral, give everybody their fair share. It was all stolen. So this is what's going on in the world today. People are all simply stealing. We're taking everything from the Lord. We're not recognizing who is actually the proprietor. So in this way we cannot be peaceful, we cannot get happiness. Oh. Okay. Are there any questions on this mantra? Anything that we've discussed today? Any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Um, for those uh, people who keeps the dog at their home and uh, they feed their dogs with uh, meat. Uh, does the dog owner get the sin of uh, feeding meat to the dogs? Uh, yes, actually he does. Oh. Because he's not just feeding the meat to the dog, he's purchasing the meat. Right? He's purchasing the meat. And by purchasing the meat, then you're encouraging people to kill animals, which they do to process the meat. And you come along and you purchase the meat and then you feed it to your dog. So yeah, you get some karma for this, taking, purchasing meat in the marketplace. Now the dog can eat, but the dog is expected to get the meat himself. It's not your job to kill the, kill the animal or to purchase the meat and feed to him. We have many, we see here in Mayapur, there's a number of dogs, they don't eat meat. 
What do they eat? They get prasadam. Different people will give them prasadam. There's no meat eaters here, but there are dogs here, and they're they're all eating. They're getting their they're getting food. That's why they're here. They're not getting any meat. If they want okay. meat, they have to hunt it themselves. They have to get the animal themselves and eat it. Okay. It's not our duty to feed them meat. That's the point. Yes, uh, a good question, uh, because these are, these are some of the problems which come when we keep an animal, when you keep a dog, and then people feel you start feeding it meat. Actually, you don't need to feed them meat, they can manage without meat, but they get the habit. You give them meat, they want meat, they want to eat more and more meat, they don't want to stop meat. But if you give them vegetables and g grains and bread and things, they'll eat it. They can live on it quite happily. They just want to eat. So it's better if you can give them prasada. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, we want to benefit the dogs. We give. There's in Chaitanya Charitam, Charitamrita, it's described how the dog followed the party. They were going from Mayapur to Navadvi, uh, to Jagannath Puri, and a dog was following them. So Shivananda Singh was in charge of the devotees, and he would give every day prasadam to the dog. And he, even sometimes they would have to go on the boat. He would pay extra money to the man on the boat to allow the dog to come on the boat. But when they got, one day when they were traveling, they, before they reached Jagannath Puri, one day somehow they forgot to give the dog prasadam. And then the dog disappeared. But when they got to Jagannath Puri, they saw the dog was there. It had already come ahead of them and was there and it was eating. Lord Chaitanya was giving the dog coconut pulp from the inside of the coconut and the dog was eating the coconut meat. And the dog was chanting, Hare Krishna. <laughs> and the dog got liberated. So devotees do give mercy to dogs. And the mercy is not to give them meat. Mercy is to give them prasadam and let them hear the holy name. Yeah? Any other questions? Everybody knows what your quota is? How do you know what your quota is? How do you know if you haven't got, how do you know if you, you, you've got more than your quota? How do you know if you've got less than your quota? Do you know? No, but in fact, sometimes I get confused. Well, Prabhupada is explaining here, not more than what we require. What do you require? You have to, we have to understand what our basic needs are. And don't be demanding that I need more, I need more. You just try to control your mind and senses and be satisfied with what is easily achieved without extra endeavor. Now if you have to be very dishonest to make money, that is not good. If you have to lie and cheat people, it's not good. It's not very good for a devotee like that. So it sh it, we should be able to live by honest means. Don't take more than we actually need. This is the principle recognizing our actual needs and demands. Yeah. 
it's a, in the beginning, it's a little tricky for us because we've never thought like that. You know, everybody's thinking more, more, get more, have a bigger place, have more money, have more. We want to expand, but Krishna consciousness, we're thinking, keep it, keep it simple, keep it basic. Don't get carried away. So it's controlling the mind and the senses. The attitude is very important to have the right attitude practicing Krishna consciousness. When we take more, we get punished. That's the problem. We have to be very careful. Nobody likes to be punished. So spiritual communism, caring for others, seeing everybody equally. Not just only thinking my, my family, when we think about Myself, first we're thinking myself, then we're thinking my family, this extended self, and then we're thinking my community, then we're thinking my country, like that. This just extended selfishness, other form, just a, the same thing. We're thinking about ourselves, but in expanded forms, in extended forms. So we're all sons of God. We have to take advantage of the wealth of God, but not more than what we require. So the very powerful verse, very important verse, we have to commit it to memory. And particularly you want to remember this meaning of this word, Isavashya, Isha, Isha, this Ishopanishad, Isha meaning Ishwara or the Supreme Lord and Avashya, Isya Vashya, the, the, the Lord in the center of the society. Everything, the society in which everything belongs to God. So when we apply this principle, then all so many all the problems of the world will be solved. We're thinking the cows are there for us to eat, the animals, so many animals killing. We don't think what is actually meant for us, what is actually given by God for our maintenance, the proper food, the food grains, the fruits, the vegetables, so many things are there. Okay, so we'll stop there now. Please look over this verse again, try to familiarize, remember the, this invocation in the first mantra and tomorrow we'll go on to mantra number two. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.